Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and in this tutorial I will show you how to make this exact simulation in Blender. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so start off by selecting the light and press X to delete. Then select the cube, and then press S, then set to scale it on the Z axis. And then press S, then Y to scale it on the Y axis. Okay, and then let's go into edit mode. And then press Ctrl R to add a loop cut. And then use the mouse wheel to add an additional loop cut. And then left click. And then press S, then Y to scale them on the Y axis. Okay. And then let's go to face select. And then hold in shift and select the two faces on each side. And then press E to extrude. And then select the following faces and hold in shift to select multiple faces. And then we need to grab them on the x-axis, so press G, then X to grab them on the x-axis. And then we're going to add 10 loop cuts for the curve modifier. So Control R and then use the mouse wheel to add 10 edges. And then we can go back to object mode. And then press R, then Y to rotate it on the Y axis. And then we need to add a curve. So go to Add, Curve, and add a circle curve. And then press S to scale. And we're going to use this curve and the curve modifier for the object to uh, create a spiral. So curve modifier, and then select the curve. As you can see, we get the spiral. And let's also add a uh, subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons and make it smoother. So let's increase the number of subdivisions. And you can also select the circle and press S to scale. And as you can see, the size of the circle changes the shape of the spiral. Okay, so uh, now we can select the spiral and let's increase the number of subdivisions both for the render and the viewport. And then we can also add smooth shading. So go to object and then shade smooth. Okay, so now we can apply the modifiers. So uh, click apply and apply. And then we can also delete the circle because we no longer need it. Okay, so let's go to file, save as and you can create the file wherever you want on the computer and then press enter to save. Okay, so now we have a spiral slide. So the next step of the tutorial is to add a sphere. So uh, let's move the 3D cursor, go to add and then let's add a sphere and then press S to scale and then press G to grab. And make sure there's a margin between the spiral and the sphere. Okay, and then let's go into the modifiers and add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons. And uh, let's add smooth shading as well. And uh, then we can add the physics. So uh, go to the physics settings, add rigid body physics. And then set the collision type for the sphere to sphere. And then set the friction value to one so that it rolls down. And then set the collision margin to zero. And then set the damping translation and rotation to 0.35 and uh, 0.6. And this is the linear and angular velocity lost over time. Okay, so now we can duplicate the uh, sphere. So we can uh, get several of these. So uh, press Shift D to duplicate. And then press Set to move the duplication on the set axis. And then press Shift R to repeat the previous actions. And uh, let's add six of them. And then we need to select the spiral and add physics to the spiral as well. So let's uh, set it to passive, then mesh, 
and set the margin to zero. Okay, so now we have all of the physics set up. So well, let's go to the rigid body world settings. I've decided to set the speed to two because of the spiral size. That looks a little bit more realistic. And then set the steps per second to uh, 250, which will improve the accuracy of the simulation. And then solver iterations to 25, the more the better. And then I'm going to set the end frame to 1000, just in case the uh, simulation lasts for a long time. And then bake the simulation. And uh, this is going to be quick, because the uh, marbles falls down at the end. So let's see what it looks like. I think it looks nice. If some of the marbles crashes and falls out of the spiral, you can just change the distance between the marbles at the beginning of the simulation. Okay. And then we're going to save before we continue. So save as, click on the plus sign, and then save. And then we're going to move the 3D cursor and add a ball at the bottom. So go to mesh, and then let's add a sphere. And then press S to scale. And then press tab for edit mode. And uh, let's go into wireframe and go to face select. And then press Alt A to deselect everything. And then press B to box select. And let's select the top of the sphere. And then X to delete the faces selected. And then let's go back to object mode. So press tab for object mode. And then let's add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of polygons. And then let's add a solidify modifier as well to add some thickness to the ball. Okay. And uh, then you can change the thickness value if you want to. So something like this. And then we need to make sure that the ball is large enough. So let's go to one of the later frames. And then press S to scale and G to grab. And then we need to apply the modifiers before we can add the physics. So click apply and apply. And then go into the physics settings. And let's add rigid body physics. Set it to passive. Set the collision type to mesh. And the margin to zero. Okay. And then we can bake the simulation once again. So uh, click delete bake. And then bake. And after a few minutes of baking, we have the new simulation. Now let's see what it looks like. I think I'm going to scale down the ball a bit. So let's go to the uh, first frame. And then press S to scale and make it slightly smaller. And then I'm going to bake it once again. This time with even greater accuracy. So let's set it to 440 for the uh, solver iterations. And then uh, delete bake and bake. And once the bake is done, we can see what it looks like. Let's see if... Uh, they fit in the bowl, and they do. So let's pause the uh, simulation, and I think we can set the end frame to 250, because we don't really need the last frames. But if your spiral was long, you would need those uh, frames. So let's save before we continue. Click on the plus sign, and then save. And uh, then it's time to set up the render and the lighting, as well as the materials. So uh, let's start off by uh, going into the render settings. And for this simulation, I'm going to use Cycles. You can use EV as well, but I think Cycles looks a lot better. And I'm going to use the GPU later, but for now I'm just going to use the CPU, because using the GPU can mess up the recording. 
And let's set the number of samples to 200, both for the render and the viewport, to increase the quality of the render. And then let's go into the world settings and uh, go to rendered view and make the background completely white. So something like this. Now let's go back to solid view and add a sun. And then go to add and then light and add a sun. And then press G to grab the sun and R to rotate. And then let's go into the light settings and set the strength to three, which uh, should be enough. And then we're going to add a material for the marbles as well. So let's go into render view. And I think that looks nice. So let's go back to solid view and select one of the marbles. Make sure you have the uh, normal selection. And then go to the materials, add a new material. And I'm going to use a uh, glossy shader. And uh, let's decrease the roughness slightly. And then you can add whatever color you want. You can add red, for example. And then we need to copy this material to the rest of the marbles. So select them and then add the material. And then do the same for the rest of the marbles slash spheres. And once they all have the same material, we can play around with the roughness and the color. So let's hide the overlay. And for this simulation, I'm going to make them blue. But uh, you can add whatever material and color you want to. Next, we need to select the spiral slide. And I'm going to use the glossy shader for this one as well. And let's make it darker. So something like this. And once you're happy with the roughness and color of the uh, spiral slide, we're going to select the bowl and add a material to the bowl. So click new. And then just play around with the different shaders and colors until you have something that you think looks nice. So I decided to uh, make it sort of gray at the end but uh, you can add whatever color you want, as I said. Okay. So I think this looks nice. And now we can start setting up the camera. So we'll press number zero to look through the camera. And then we need to increase the range of the camera. So select the camera and set the end value to a thousand. And uh, then press N and lock the camera to view. Then let's go a little bit backwards. I'm not going to include the whole spiral in the final render. So uh, let's uh, set it around here so that you can see the uh, marbles falling down at the beginning of the simulation. And everything looks fine. So let's set up the render. So go to the render settings and uh, let's enable the overlay and go back to solid view. And I'm going to use the GPU. If you don't have a GPU, just use the CPU for the render. And I'm going to set the tile size to 512. But if you only have a CPU, just leave it at 64. And then let's go to the output settings. And I'm going to set the frame rate to 30 FPS. And then we need to select a folder for the final animation. So just find a folder on your computer. And uh, then create a new one. Give the folder a name. And then select the folder. Then give the render a name. I'm just going to call it Toot. And then let's do a uh, test render. So go to render and then render image. And I speed it up this part and this is what the render looks like. And I like the results. So let's go back to Blender. And 
and uh, then let's uh, set the uh, file format to AVI JPEG so that we render a video. You can also use PNGs, but uh, going directly to AVI JPEG is faster. And then click Render Animation. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and more coming soon.